G'day ZGD here with your first look and a bit of a beginner's guide to the upcoming Monster Train. I say your first look because I've actually already played almost 50 hours of the game on the review copy the developers sent me. It turns out I've uh, gotten quite addicted to it. Monster Train is a deck building roguelite, the same genre as Slay the Spire if you're familiar. There are some rather large gameplay differences here that sets this game apart, such as the card upgrading system which I'll get into later, and playing creatures to fight for you. While I loved Slay the Spire and it's regarded by many to be the best in the genre, this game, Monster Train, has quickly become my personal favourite deck building roguelite for some reasons I'll get into a little bit later. The story of the game is a fun one, hell has been conquered by angels and has literally frozen over. As the creatures of hell, it's your job to deliver via train the pyre to reignite the flames of hell. If you're unfamiliar with deck building roguelike games as a genre, then here is the basic premise. In each game of Monster Train, you start off with a simple and weak deck of cards and you battle your way through a series of fights, acquiring new cards, items and upgrades as you go. You try to create powerful combos and come up with a winning strategy on the fly. You take your deck as far as you can and you try to beat the final boss. It's difficult at first to do this or even to get to the final boss, but it gets easier as you learn new strategies that you can apply to future attempts. Later on, once you actually start winning the game, you try and take on higher difficulty modes that get more and more challenging, or you try and get higher scores in either single or multiplayer challenges like the Daily Challenge, or uh, in games that you can set up against your friends. What makes games like this really addictive is that every run ends up being unique, and your decks will end up different each time. You can try and use the same strategy every time, but you'll see different cards and upgrades, so you might not have the opportunity to pull it off and it's not always going to be as effective. A much more fluid approach will often prove more successful. Coming up with powerful combos on the fly and adapting your strategy as you go based on the challenges that are presented to you is a pretty like, addictive kind of gameplay feeling. And because the game only lasts between 30 minutes to an hour and a half per run, it's pretty easy when you finish a run, either by failing, especially by failing, <laughs> to uh, just be like, mm, I think I might just have one more run. So now that you got the basic idea, the basic premise, I'll take you through some of the features and then we'll do a beginner's walkthrough of a full run. Settle in because this might be a little bit of a longer video unless I die immediately. So in Monster Train you've got single player and multiplayer. In single player mode you'll unlock new things as you level up each of the clans, which I'll get into in a second, and those new things, the new cards and artifacts and stuff like that can appear in future runs. So there's a bit of like a progression system of the game getting more and more deep and more and more interesting as you play. You also unlock higher and higher difficulties. In multiplayer how everything, however, everything is auto uh, automatically unlocked so that all players are on a level playing field. There's Hell Rush, which is a time trial mode, so it's like speed run. You'll start on the starting line and try and go as fast as you can. This is like a play fast mode if you want to have not too much time to think and strategize and everyone's kind of like, you know, on that time pressure. I haven't really played Hell Rush yet, but I have played the daily challenges, which are like randomized modifiers. If you played Slay the Spire, you're familiar, it's the same premise. Randomized modifiers that make for goofy and interesting and sometimes ridiculous and ludicrous challenges. And there's a leaderboard for that for each uh, people in the day. You can compare against your friend scores and compare against the wider community. Custom challenges, however, is my favorite thing because you can make a custom kind of version of the daily challenge. You can do a lot of stuff in here to uh, create a bunch of different modifiers that change the way the run functions, some pretty ridiculous stuff in there, and you can come up with three combos of those, and everyone will play the same clan, so you can just determine who like what you'll be playing, and everyone will be competing with the exact same run seed, so the run will be the same for everyone, so RNG plays very little role in it, and uh, instead it comes down to your actual decisions and how good you are at the gameplay. And uh, you can do the time trial for this, and you can also set the uh, Covenant ranks, which is like the kind of new game plus increasing difficulties. It's 25 levels of this. But uh, what's really cool about the multiplayer, and it's not easy to show you here, but maybe I can show you later, is that when you're playing, you can see other people playing the game at the same time on the map. So you can see where someone has died, their train will be derailed off the tracks. Or you can see someone's currently engaged in this battle, or they took this path. So if you're playing against a friend, it's super fun because you can see them playing in real time and you can see their score updating in real time as they finish each battle and their health go low. We had a battle once where Amy just scraped through a fight with 2 HP and then seeing that update was like, whoa, what happened in that fight? <laughs> Let's go take a look at the single player. So you have a logbook, firstly, which has all your unlocks in it. So this gives you an idea of uh, the different things you can unlock, all the different cards. I've played, as I said, a lot of this, so I've unlocked most of the stuff at this point, so I'll be able to show you a run with a lot of stuff unlocked. So, there are five clans in Monster Train, and this is rather interesting. A lot of the games, like, you have single classes you can pick. There are effectively five classes in this game, but you have to pick two, and it matters the order as well. So, you've got 
Hellhorns, which are like aggressive red Magic the Gathering style creatures, multi-striking, raging berserkers, and uh, armoring up kind of like tanky boys, and fireballs and direct burn damage and stuff like that. Awokens, healing, thorns, tanky things, creatures that grow, stuff like that. Stygian Guard is kind of like spellcastery combo, lots of tricky magic, freezing the enemies, um, sapping them, making them weaker, making them more vulnerable to spells. Lots of, if you like comboing spells or you're a blue Magic the Gathering player, you'll probably like Stygian Guard. Umbra, which is rather unique and interesting. The last two clans actually are really unique. Um, Umbra is about creating little tiny creatures that you eat called morsels and you feed your creatures the morsels to make them stronger. <laughs> I've never really seen a game do that before, but it's a lot of fun. And then Melting Remnant, which is candle people that burn out over time, and they have uh, a lot of uh, synergy with death. So uh, it's a lot, of, a lot like Black Magic the Gathering, where you uh, uh, have creatures die and you bring them back stronger, that sort of thing. And some of these guys like witnessing other people die. <laughs> so Melting Remnant also rather interesting as well. Now, each clan has its own champion, which can be modified in a bunch of different ways, which you'll see in a bit. Um, and the primary clan determines which champion you have. So you could be Hellhorned and have the Hellhorned champion, and then have Awoken as your allied clan, which will provide Awoken cards to your deck. So you'll have access to those, so you'll be a green-red deck. Or you can do Awoken Hellhorned, which, you know, is the same access to the same pool of cards, but the champion is different, and the champion has a pretty big impact in many cases on how the deck actually plays out. So uh, whether you choose one way or the other, it's going to be quite a different game. Like, we're going to be focusing more on multi-strike and raging stuff, or maybe stacking armor here. Whereas this way we might be focusing more on card draw or healing spells or um, getting thorns, even though we'll have access to the same kind of pool of cards overall. So it's rather interesting how that plays out. Now, Sajin Guard, Umbra, and Melting Remnant are a lot crazier and more complex than the uh, two starting Hellhorned and Awoken. So we're going to do our first run here with Hellhorned and Awoken. If you play the demo, you'll be familiar with this, but this is kind of aimed at people, you know, wanting to learn a bit more about the game. So we'll do with that. And uh, if you'd like to see more gameplay in the future with some of the crazier classes, Sajin, Umbra, and Melting Remnant, then I'd be happy to uh, do some more content in the future if you're keen to see that. Now, the other thing to mention is as you win, when you win your first game, you unlock Covenant ranks, and uh, these increase the difficulty of the game and make it more interesting overall. Um, and that's kind of like the goal is to try and get to Covenant rank 25 and beat it. That's like your single player long term goal if you get really into the game. I've made it to Covenant rank 9 in my 50 hours of gameplay. The game is rather challenging at times. Uh, for the purposes of this, I'm going to tone it down a little bit, bit so that hopefully we can have a good chance of making it through a uh a full run i'll do covenant rank three which is a pretty good challenge that i could still fail in during the course of this walkthrough so uh we'll leave it there but as you can see this adds stronger enemies uh it adds additional random cards to your starting deck a dead weight which is like a cursed card and uh major battles now have additional animes uh enemies even not animes <laughs> And we're gonna do a, uh, we'll do a, we'll do an Awoken Hellhorned run. I think I prefer the Awoken Champion, though. Both are a lot of fun. I've actually really enjoyed all of the clans. Usually in these games there's like a, like a class or something I dislike, but, uh, in these ones I like all the clans a lot. Um, not all the combos necessarily. Some combos are really awkward, <laughs> but, um, or I haven't figured out how to make a good deck for them yet, but I'm keen to try and figure it out at some point. So we've got some random starting cards here. I have gold borders because I've won runs with them. Not just flexing, don't mind me. Uh, Wildwood Sap, Consume, which means the card will be uh, used once in a battle and then discarded, so it's gone for the rest of the battle. Regen, which is healing over time. Molten Imps, which are little creatures you can summon that have summoning effects. So this one deals five damage to enemy units. Very good, actually. These are great starting cards. An Invigorating Solution, another Consume card that draws three next turn. Zero cost. You can see the mana up here. You can see the power the attack of the card and the uh, for creatures and the defense of the creature or the health of the creature down the bottom right there it tells you a little bit about the final boss and stuff like that but we will go ahead and get started so you can see our starting deck up here we have the sentient as the champion which doesn't have anything interesting about it yeah it looks terrible right zero ten looks terrible uh it'll get more powerful as we go our dead weight which is our unplayable curse card um so this just fills up our deck with something useless and then we get basic starting spells now the basic starting spells everyone has access to train stewards which are like the cheap kind of crappy throwaway creature that you'll eventually try and get rid of everyone has these however depending on your clan choices you'll have another set of spells as well so or sometimes creatures so for green we get restores health and regen restore so heal and torches for red 
but the other classes have different things. So uh, you might not necessarily have restores or torches depending on the combo you're playing. So that, that's pretty interesting as well that the actually starting deck is determined based on that too. Not just the cards you get as you go. So we'll, uh, our objective will be to add cards to this, cut cards from this, and try and make a powerful deck with some powerful combos that can hopefully see us to and defeat the final boss. Now we have a few things when we start here to get us started before our first battle. The first is a random relic. So we'll get a choice of two relics and uh, or artifacts here. I think they're called relics inside the spot. That's why I'm calling them relics. <laughs> we have infused mallet, which is chance to deal damage when enemies enter the train and pyre health. Now the pyre health, you can see up in the top left here, 80 of 80 is our pyre that we're trying to deliver to hell. It, ha it must survive. So it has to at least make it with one hit point. And it also does uh, 20 damage because it can defend itself if creatures get to attack it, which you'll see in a second. Now, increasing the pyre health is like, oh, great, but we want to try and avoid the pyre really taking damage in the first place, especially if you want to get a higher score. So I could just skip these for gold, but Infused Mallet is actually okay. I'll take that. It'll occasionally kill some kind of rather annoying uh, weaker creatures. And then we get the Dark Forge, which will get a few Dark Forges in our run. And this allows us to upgrade our champion. Now, there are three different upgrade categories for each champion, so you're not always going to see the same ones. And because it goes in multiple stages, you have like cultivating one, two, and three, you can actually mix them as well. So you can go like cultivating, explo cultivating explosive later. You could be cultivating two explosive, cu cultivating something else. So there's a whole bunch of uh, different um, kind of like powerful effects, and you can combine them to create some interesting stuff. Like you might, for example, the other one I know for a fact is thorns. Uh, so adds retaliatory damage to the champion, and the idea is to make them attack. Combos pretty nicely with Reve Revenge draw, draw 1. So when the creature gets hit or takes damage, you draw an extra card, which is really powerful. Uh, adding thorns to that is nice, because you put it up front as the tank, it draws you cards, and it damages the enemies. Really nice. Rejuvenate, so this is when you heal the creature, it deals 15 damage. This is more based around like a healing spell-oriented deck, and it's also very powerful. However, I really like Revenge Draw 1. Also, it gives you a nice beefy creature, 40 health at the start. So we're going to go for Revenge Draw 1, and we could maybe segue that into Healing or Thorns later, or go for lots of card draw and lots of combo potential. Potentially make a pretty interesting deck with this start. The artifact we started with didn't lend a lot to the build, but I like to check the artifact first, because it gives you an idea of maybe you find something like a modifier for a certain spell or a certain type of gameplay, and you're like, hmm, I might try and build towards that. Now, each battle you'll see a little preview of the sorts of enemies you'll be you'll be fighting against. Um, the fights are set in each one, so like you'll see the same bosses each time. However, their modifiers and different aspects of them and how they fight and how they play are different each time. And also the trials can be different each time as well. So trials are available in some fights and they are an optional thing that will give you a bonus reward. So in this case, 50 coins for the cost of some sort of negative effect. Sometimes these are brutal. Now, when it comes to earning a high score as well, if you're playing multiplayer, trials give you increased score multiplier, so they're worth doing. We'll take on the trial here. Spikes 3 is a little bit nasty, but we're mostly going to be trying to uh, tank the enemies and maybe pick them off with fireballs. We will see how it goes. We do have healing spells to deal with that. Now, one of the creatures appeared and immediately died due to that artifact we got, so it's already, it's already playing off. <laughs> it's already paying off even. So here is our train, and you'll notice that there is four levels. So the topmost level is our pyre. We want to prevent creatures from getting here. If they do, they'll battle our pyre, damaging it, and it'll try and defend itself. But we want to try and prevent that in the first place. And we have three floors, and what will happen is monsters will enter the bottom floor. You will have one round of combat, so they'll attack, you'll attack back. And then if the creatures survive, any surviving creatures will move up to the next floor. Same thing, and then if they survive, they'll move up to the next floor. It might sound a little confusing at first, but as you see how it plays out, it's uh, it'll become pretty clear. And then if they survive here, they'll move up and attack the pyre. So we want to try and stop them wherever possible. Now, these creatures here have a few things going on. In addition to the spikes we just added, they also have rage, which is a decaying damage buff. So it starts off high and then gets weaker. So if we wanted to defend on a higher floor, it would be safer. However, I have a pretty tanky hero. I know I have some things like molting imps and some fireballs, stuff that I can do to uh, try and kill these guys off the bottom floor. So I'm pretty, I'm feeling pretty ballsy. And the faster you kill the boss later on, the more bonus points you'll get as well. So not really super important early on, but nice when you're trying to play multiplayer. And we're going to drop the Molten Imp. Uh, we could try and drop it behind so that it stays defended. As you can see, we can place creatures in a certain order, and this matters, especially because if you recall, we have Revenge Draw 1. So if the creatures attack our champion, the Sentient, we'll get extra cards. So we want to try and get those extra cards as much as possible. 
and we can protect this guy, or we can use him to absorb a, a hit effectively. Now, it's not really going to matter too much. I'll probably just sacrifice the imp and instead, say, put like a, a train steward behind the bot, behind our champion to protect him so that he can keep attacking uh, from relative safely, eff safety effectively. Now, there's no reason for us to use the Wildwood Sap, but we will consume the solution to draw extra cards. Then once we're done, you can see our Ember, which is our mana effectively to play spells, is down on the bottom left here. We've got the cards. You can see how much mana we'll get next turn, how many cards we'll draw next turn. Next turn, we'll draw eight instead of five because of that card we just played. And we can just end turn. We defeated all the creatures that last round, so we're all good. Every now and then, these little collectors will appear, little loot goblins, Diablo 3 style. If you kill them, you get a bunch of extra gold, so pretty nice. We do want to try and... Uh, get rid of him if possible now if we don't kill him one round he'll escape and we won't get the gold so there's a few things we can do here we can risk using our fireball here or we can pop down a train steward which i prefer that idea a lot more so the train steward will attack him before he can escape so that's great and that allows us to use our torch skill to kill one of these guys which prevents five damage from incoming on our uh, champion which is nice we draw less cards but that's okay and uh, it'll uh, also prevent a little bit less thorns damage from being, being dealt or less creatures from making it through. Now, we can't kill all these guys right now, but we'll deal, them, deal with them a little bit later on. We might also be able to use some regen here. We could do this and stack five regen, or we could just get like one regen here and then stack it with this for six regen. So that'll give us uh, effectively six turns of regen that decays and gets weaker a little bit as we go. Now, I'm playing on uh, high game speed here. There's game speed settings for the combat plays out. Sometimes battles with bosses and stuff can... A lot of things can happen. So you can go into fast forward mode. You can actually hold right click to make it even faster. I'll play on times two while you guys are getting familiar with it. And then we'll, uh, we'll probably turn it down a little bit later. So creatures in this game, unlike spells. So you play spells and as long as they don't have consume, they'll come back around later and you can play them again. So they go into your discard and then they'll go back into your draw pile for you to get things back. Um, but creatures, however, once they die, they're gone un unless you have a way of bringing them back or they have something like endless ability, which we might see later. Um, so we could try and defend here or we could just fight all these guys. That's fine too. We'll save our Molting Imp for later because he could be handy a little bit later on. And uh, I'm just going to stack the regen. Normally I wouldn't waste a Wildwood Sap right now when I don't need it, but I'll stack the regen because I know the boss fight's coming very soon. Now, there's no reason for us to not kind of just start popping down some of these train stewards here. So, I'll pop them down here in case the boss makes it past us. So, the boss has appeared in the early battles. The boss appears pretty quickly. Now, what happens with the boss is you get one round of playing cards, and then the battle will keep happening until either the boss is dead, or the boss proceeds to the next floor and everything of yours is dead. Now, in this case, everything of ours is going to die, because we don't really have a way of killing the boss here. Um... <laughs> We uh, effectively are just going to draw a bunch of cards because the boss is going to hit us a bunch of times, but we're not really going to do much damage back. However, we can get a little bit more damage on the boss if we drop this Molting Imp and wipe out those first couple guys. And now we do 118 points of damage to the boss. Now, I love that this game calculates it. You can see that all of these are going to die here. But I love how the game calculates this um, out for you. It's really helpful for me because I'm terrible at math. <laughs> but the reason for that was we killed the guys that were going to kill our train steward. So now as the boss is wailing away on this a sentient, who's really tanky, especially with that nine regen, which will trigger after every round of combat, which you'll see in a second. I might even slow it down at first. Um, this guy's just going to keep wailing as well as the molting imp. That's why I put the molting imp behind here. Now it's not a bad idea for me to also stack a little bit more regen and I can, you know, get two points of damage here as well. Um, and that actually makes it enough to kill the boss on this floor. So with a few little adjustments, we were able to win on the first floor. We we'll go go, went from dealing no damage to the boss to killing the boss. So you can see, we're kind of like, the boss attacks us, our creatures attack back. And it's always in that order, unless you have modifiers that make your creatures quicker. And then the regen will tick. So we'll take damage, regen will tick, and it'll keep happening until the regen decays. So regen's a very powerful mechanic for tanking if you stack it up like this. So we can speed it up because this is going to take a little bit. <laughs> Let the battle play out. And speed it up to times three. And look at all the cards we're drawing. We've drawn our entire deck of cards. <laughs> you can see how this might become powerful later on. Now in this case, had the boss made it through the next floor, we at least would have had a bunch of spells we could have played. Now we got our little bonus. We get 50 gold for winning the battle. And we get two card drafts. Because there are two clans in this game that you pick, you get a card draft for each clan. Or in some cases, you get a rare draft or something instead. But uh, in this case, we get a, class, uh, yeah, a thing for each clan. So uh, these are all pretty good spells. 
This one gives a creature eight extra damage, but lowers its health by two. This is plus three, plus three. And Glimmer is restore two health to all friendly units, deal two damage to all friendly, all enemy units. I really like Glimmer, especially if we upgrade it later on. It's really nice to have a sweeping AOE clear for squishy creatures that are nasty. Now we're also, we're also seeing quite a lot of imps here. And if you have a bunch of imps, uh, you can kind of build into imps and imps can be quite powerful. So I don't mind taking a molting imp potentially is quite nice. Um, Hornbreak is all right, piercing, ignores shields, and Rage, as I said, is a damage buff. We're going to take the Imp, though. I like the potential of possibly being able to build into Imps here. Now, after we defeat each battle, you'll see as we scroll down, there are two sides you can pick each time, and each side will have a random selection of things like uh, creatures that you can get and shops to upgrade. These upgrade units and these upgrade spells. There's like Relics, Creature Draft, Restore Pyre Health, Duplicate a Card, Remove Cards, More Shops, Gold, Random Events in the, in the form of like Icy Caverns, like this one here. So lots of different fun things we can do. Now, I don't really have any creatures to upgrade, um, so Merchants of Steel is not super useful for me. I have like, you know, you can't upgrade your champion here. You upgrade the champion through the separate thing. I can upgrade Molten Imps or Train Stewards, which we don't really want to do. So we're going to go for the uh, Hellhorned banner and try and find a high DPS creature. We could find a DPS creature here, but we're more likely to find one in Hellhorned that we can stick behind our champion so it can do damage. You saw the Train Steward do it last turn. We're going to try and do it even better here. Okay. Oh, we didn't end up with the greatest choices for this. Um, Demon Fiend is an uh, expensive creature, expensive large creature. It's powerful. But it does cost 4 mana. Now, unless you have a way of decreasing that, or you get additional mana later on, additional ember later on, uh, it's impossible to cast this right now for me. Uh, Railbeater is fairly decent, though. It doesn't do a lot of damage. Not really a DPS one. More of a bit of a tank slash manipulator, since it uh, pushes enemies around, changing the order of the enemies. Uh, there's no reason for me to not really take Railbeater, apart from the fact that it's not, like, super good. But uh, I still I need some creatures earlier on, on them, or, or I'm going to die. So this is the shop. We can purge cards to remove cards from our deck. Always a good option. We can reroll once, and you can do that after buying stuff. And then we can buy specific upgrades. Now, upgrades in this game are huge, and the one thing I really love about the game, um, because you can do some very fun stuff <laughs> with this. Lowering card costs, creating cre cards that come back to your hand each time you cast them, uh, creating creatures with multi-strike and first strike, and creatures with... Uh, damage shields and you can set up some really powerful spells and combos uh lots of good stuff we can do with this i do really like minus one cost on ember on glimmer so that we can cast it every single time we draw it without you know getting in the way of anything um and i but i also really like increased uh damage so you can add like 10 spell power which just makes it 12 and 12 and i also really like holdover which is a thing that lets you cast it each turn so we might hold off on doing the minus one mana cost i don't have a ton of spells to upgrade just yet double stack allows us to apply like regen 10 instead of regen 5 or regen 2 instead of 1 which is not as not as impressive and magic power and consume now i do really like this surge stone because it works as a way of thinning your deck if you haven't played card games before the idea of thinning your deck is the smallest deck possible with the strongest cards in it is usually better because you can cast your strongest cards more often so we want to try and get rid of cards, and this is a way of doing it whilst also still having an impact. So we can make a torch do 22 damage, but we can only cast it once per battle. But that's still good because then it means we're not constantly drawing torches. We can also do the same with a restore. We can do it with glimmer, but I actually want glimmer. So we might make a uh, consume um, fireball there. And then I'm going to reroll, see what we get. We get another consume, and we also get a remove, consume, and cost plus one which is uh, not bad for some of these, especially if we combine it with minus one cost to make it zero again. So if we want a lot of card draw, we could use Invigorating Solution. Now, we already have a champion that draws a bunch of cards, so that's probably not really necessary. But uh, I, I am keen on the idea of doing a Wildwood Sap. Regen's very strong, and I don't mind sacking some regen. So we can make it cost uh, additional. Where did it go? There it is. And then we can reduce this cost back down to zero. So now we can apply five regen zero cost as many times as we want which is a pretty powerful effect now we could add another consume one here or we could just straight up purge a card uh i'm not really looking to purge too many cards yet although maybe just purging a restore might not be the worst idea in the world i might do a uh, consume restore instead so just a single cast 22 heal it's good for like healing up if things go wrong 
then I might cut some restores a little bit later on. Restore's not too bad in this deck so far, because once you've got some regen stacking, you can stack more of it with restore. Penitent Prayers. A little preview of the enemies here. These ones trigger stuff after combat. They stack curses on you. We can add four damage to them for a chance at drafting a unit. I'll take it. I'll take it. We need to find a nice high damage creature to stick behind our champion. All right, so we're obviously going to put down a sentient. You always have the sentient in your own opening hand, and the rail beater is like okay here. I'm I'm fine with putting the rail beater. It's our it's our highest damage creature at the moment. It's not particularly good, but uh, he's good enough for now. So we'll go ahead and do that. We'll draw any more cards next turn, and we'll play our train steward on the next floor. And we could consume this now just to thin it out. It's fine. We'll add one regen. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> Mostly just don't want to draw it again. We have the Collector here, and as you see, we have a lot of cards now. Uh, so these guys added these Sinner's Burdens to our deck, which are purgeable cards that just don't do anything, so we kind of just have to get rid of them. Um, we might do a Molting Imp here. We'll put it behind the Train Steward so that he doesn't die immediately. That gets rid of him, and that gets rid of that. Um, we will want to kill the Reconciler as soon as possible. We have three imps, if I recall correctly. So I'm kind of happy to use our imp, an imp here. Um, in front. And we'll have it tank a hit. We won't draw an extra card, but we shouldn't need it next turn. Now, you guys are going to make it through. Not too much we can do about that. We could do an extra two points of damage with Glamour, but that's not really going to do a lot for us. So what I might do is stack another Train Steward here to try and do a little bit more damage. These guys are going to get through to the pyre most likely, and we'll take some damage, but it is what it is. They're a bit tankier than I have means of dealing with right now. Taking a little bit of pyre damage is okay. Not ideal, but it's alright. We'll be okay. Now we're going to lose our train steward here. I could restore. Uh, it would not be enough to tra save the train steward though. Train steward would still die. So we're just going to go ahead and apply some regen to our champ here. I could do 22 points of damage. Oh wait, we can tra save the train steward. So that consume fireball. I almost didn't realize that I had it. And we'll heal up our champion. We want to make our champion as tanky as possible for the boss fight. The longer the boss takes fighting our champ, the more damage we'll be able to deal to it with our creature that's sitting behind our champion. So right now we're going to do 50 points of damage. Now we're going to kill this guy because that lowers the amount of damage a lot. So we go up to 60. So we, you know, effectively bought like two turns. We're going to apply our Wildwood Sap. And a little bit more here. Looks like we weren't really able to tip it over to the next level, unfortunately. Not able to get an extra hit, uh, despite our regen. Uh, oh, I know what the problem is. This guy's Sweep, which attacks all enemy units. So the problem is our Railbeater here can only tank so many hits, so it's actually the Railbeater that's going to die. I'm, I ensured that I'm going to draw extra cards, but we're not going to be able to do any more damage to the boss. Yeah, this boss is pretty brutal, actually, with the sweep early on. Because <laughs> you tend to have a few squishy creatures and nothing that's able to really kind of uh, go toe-to-toe -to -toe with this guy. Unless you go, like, Thorns early on. Thorns is pretty good against this boss. As you can see, I've drawn a maximum hand size. <laughs> but the boss has done it. The boss has wiped us out. It's a little bit brutal. Um, we're going to try and do as much damage as we can to the boss here. And we might just get a little bit of healing out at the same time. But this guy's going to do five. If I heal once more, we tank another hit. Uh, we're just trying to reduce the boss's health as much as possible. It's very likely the boss will make it through to the pyre. Um, we'll do a bit of this. It's not going to be enough. Oh, it is enough now to tank an extra hit. That's fine then. Um, and then there's no real reason to use Wildwood Sap. I mean, we can. It doesn't cost anything. But <laughs> it's not going to make a difference here. Um, we'll save our imp because we're pretty likely to draw him next turn. We'll play a train steward, try and get a little bit more damage next turn. We try, we can do 20 points of damage per hit. So we're going to take maybe like 20, 30 points of damage off the boss, depending on how much damage we can do next turn. Okay, we did get a molten imp. Now the imp's going to die no matter what. Doesn't matter if we put him in front or behind because the guy's got sweep. We can get an extra five points of damage out. Another point of damage there, and that's pretty much it. That's all she wrote. So we got him down to 70, which means we take 25 points of damage, something like that. It's a little bit brutal, a little bit ouch, but I've had worse. <laughs> I've, uh, I've experienced worse. Now you'll see for the score that taking damage uh, lowers up to minus 
So if you do a challenge that gives you bonus 50% and then you take 50 points of damage or more, then you'll kind of break even. So the challenges still will often, even if you take a bit of damage, uh, leave you ahead in score. Uh, and that is if you're multiplying it up and trying to beat your friends. Now, Sharpen is really quite good. Uh, it's a little expensive at two mana cost, plus four and spikes four, which is when the enemy attacks you, take four damage. Uh, we already have a Glimmer, we can play with later. Vinegrass is also really good too, because it allows you to uh, grab a unit and bring it to the front, which uh, can be super effective. But since we already have quite a bit of AoE damage, I'm not too worried about it. So I might take Sharpen and look to upgrade it, hopefully. Now we have uh, another Imp, however, this is a different one. This one applies Rage. There's also Vent, which is a 2x damage to enemy units based on how much money you spend. And then Ascend a unit, which can be quite helpful. It allows you to shift a unit intentionally up a floor. You can move one of yours up, or you can move one of the enemies up. Um, there's some stuff like this that also dazes enemies when you do that, which is a bit more powerful. I'm going to take the Imp and see if we can't maybe pull off some sort of Imp build. Uh, we did get a high DPS character here, 30 Horned Warrior, to stick behind our champ is really good. However, the Husk Hermit is also really good too. Sweep is, we just saw in that last battle, AoE. It hits everyone. If you upgrade this guy with some extra damage, can do some excellent thinning out of uh, smaller creatures on the first floor. Uh, however, I think I need the damage. I need the big damage, so I'm going to grab a Horned Warrior. Sweep's really good, but again, we have three imps that deal AoE damage, a Glimmer, and some Fireballs, so we're pretty we're pretty good on the uh, AoE damage at the moment. Duplicate cards is really powerful, especially if you up have upgraded cards, because you can duplicate the upgrade. So I could make two of the uh, Invigorating Solutions. Uh, sorry, the Wildwood Saps, the upgraded Wildwood Saps. Like, I could duplicate that. However, right now, I think maybe more creatures and the artifact. Both sides will get this Concealed Caverns. But uh, until I get more upgrades, I'm not really looking to duplicate. We could heal, but uh, we'll be all right. <laughs> we'll be all right, hopefully. I'm going to check the artifacts. Cards with consume have 50% chance to be discarded instead, so it can sometimes not trigger the consume. Or winged indulgence for minus damage. Um, both of these are pretty good. This hits multi-strike enemies really hard. Um, so that one's not bad overall. And also works pretty well with the idea of like a regen sort of build. Um, since uh, you get you get hit more times and more chance to heal it up. Uh, hmm. The consume is not bad for us as well. We have a couple consume cards. Not a lot. And we did remove consume from one. This can have some pretty... I've had some runs where this really came in clutch. I think the uh, winged indulgence probably is a more sure thing to be useful though. We'll check the creature here. So this one has quick... Um, which means it hits first before the enemies, which is pretty useful because it's squishy. <laughs> uh, Animus is quite good. Um, high damage. And uh, the other thing I haven't mentioned yet is size. So you can see the two little lights behind it and then three up the top here. Um, that's the width of the unit effectively. And you'll, you'll notice maybe in the uh, battles that there's like a floor space. You can increase the floor space. Um, so if you get really large creatures, you might not be able to fit many other creatures on that floor, but you can actually upgrade the floor space. Thorn Hello is quite good. We can uh, It starts off with like a bunch of unhealed health, and you can heal it to try and gain spikes. We haven't really gone, in, gone into a Thorns build, but it's not a bad tank. Um, I'm tempted to kind of go for the uh, Animus of Speed, though. She's good, and we have two good DPS options to put down the bottom now. They're a little squishy, but that's okay. So these are like question mark random events. Uh, it can be all sorts of different things. In this case, we have a choice between two things. Well, we can leave. One is to get some of the bottled stuff, Bone Shine, that allows us to heal our Pyre. Or Bone Rattler, which is uh, enhance your Pyre with bonus damage. Now, I think I'll just take the heal. I can slowly heal myself over time, then I don't have to really worry about going for one of the heal things. It does add an extra card to our deck, though, that doesn't really have an impact on the actual battle at hand. So sometimes you might want to just leave without taking that. So next, we have Daedalus who places explosive sea mine barrel things and there's a bunch of different effects it can have. In this case, the barrels will explode twice, which is uh, actually pretty nasty because <laughs> that's like 20 points of damage. So there's a few ways of dealing with this, thankfully. A lot of carnage just happened. <laughs> they got minus one damage and one of them died. Now there's a few ways of dealing with this. You can just, they have one point of health so you can kill them. Sometimes they spawn with damage shields instead. 
And uh, if, it, if you can't kill them, they might well kill whatever creatures. Or you can just avoid them. If he places it here, then it's fine. Now you notice this boss is actually on screen. Now he'll fly between levels and you can actually deal damage to him. The harder bosses typically are flying along the side. And you can uh, deal damage to them during the course of the fight, which is really quite cool. So we can do, for example, place a Molding Imp. And deal 5 damage to the boss, as well as wiping all of that out. And then we're going to go ahead and put the Sentient here. And then we're just going to chuck our Rail Beater behind. Now, I think we'll just do a point of damage to the boss. Two points of damage to the boss. And you see he's going to take 11 damage because our Rail Beater and our Imp are going to hit him. So getting as much damage onto the boss as possible in these earlier rounds is very helpful. He summoned the mine, but it died to our infused mallet. <laughs> it feels good. It feels good. We can take this opportunity to deal 30 points of damage to the boss. So I'm not going to pass that opportunity up. And, oh, I mean, hell, we could even put Animus of Speed there as well. Why not double stack it, right? If creatures make it through to here, we'll just we'll just throw some train stewards down. I'll take 55 points of damage on the boss. You get a nice bonus score if you uh, kill the boss before it even arrives to the train to do battle. Now, do I if I even if I save my steward here with a with a torch, it's uh he's still gonna die. However, I do have a solution. Molting Imp will do the trick. Now, there's a pretty good chance we can take out this creature here. Now, if we let them go past, however, they're uh, just going to die to the Animus of Speed. So I might not waste the torch there. I think I'd much rather use the torch down on the bottom floor here where we can have a greater impact with it. We might save our Molting Imp for later if they spam a bunch more creatures. We'll use this, of course. We'll apply some regen now to get started on that regen stacking. And I could put the other Train Steward down. Um, it's not going to make much of a difference. I think I'll just Glimmer. Do a little bit of healing and damage down the bottom floor. Glim is a little weak right now, although it's great when they have some squishy enemies that are that do nasty things. It's like great in this situation, right? <laughs> Glimmer right now does a lot. Uh, okay, this is why we wanted to save our Molten Imp though. For exactly that situation, that's exactly the situation we wanted. Here's a pretty good time to, uh, I mean, we don't need it now and the rage is going to decay. So the rage is only a temporary buff, but you can see it would increase their damage there. Might be nice if the boss was there. So maybe we'll hold off on that. We'll apply our regen. We want to do that whenever it comes up. And we can do a little bit of damage, but we're probably better off uh, sharpening our boss. Since it's designed to tank and now deals 4 damage back whenever, uh, whenever it does tank a hit. And boss just getting wailed on. I love it. Gotta, gotta love to see that. Okay, now he has summoned the top level here. Is going to cause a lot of grief for us. We're going to Glimmer to get rid of the sea mine, And this one is going to die. And we're just a little bit shy of deal killing the Forged Disciple, unfortunately. Um, if I had placed that Rage Minion there earlier, we would have uh, done it. But we did other things instead. Not going to make any difference if I do that. So we might just start... Uh, we could just do two damage to the boss, or we could do two damage to this thing. I think we'll just do two damage to the boss. Fortunately, we let one of them through, but it only has like one point of damage, so it's not a big deal. <laughs> it's not a big deal. And then we have the final wave with the boss now. So, boss is set to take 170 points of damage. Unfortunately, this guy's going to tank a bunch of the hits initially, which is a little bit rough. So we're going to use... Stack the regen here. Uh, you're going to die, so that's fine. It'll go through to the third level and die. Stack the regen. And I might as well just use my bone shine. Two points of damage isn't going to make any difference either way. Unless 10, 20, 4. Actually, two points of damage will make a difference. No, I, I, I miscalculated. I told you I wasn't good at math. <laughs> I thought it would get us through one hit quicker on the little dude. But uh, did not make a difference in the end. Still, this is a lot of damage to the boss, and uh, we draw all our cards ready for next turn to try and execute the boss, hopefully. Okay, so we're only... we're just going to be trying to get a little bit of extra damage out here, I think. What we can do is we can put a Fledgling Imp. We can put him at the back, or we can put him at the front to kind of like tank a hit. Uh, I might put him at the front to tank a hit, actually, because these guys will get a little bit more damage uh, happening first. This is going to take 31 points of damage. 
Not really much we can do here. <laughs> Apply regen to that, because why not? Um, yeah, not much we can do here. I can add, add a little bit of extra damage. Might just uh, cast my Bone Shine and heal too. <laughs> Wipe down the top one. Little bit of extra damage to the boss. We're sneaking through some damage here. I'm having a hard time. We don't have anything to tank here at the front. We are doing 55 points of damage, thankfully. Um, we probably want to spike the one at the back so it gets two hits in. Yeah, I think we're going to spike the one at the back. Two hits in, a little bit of extra damage, and then a torch. And we get him low enough to survive. But this is going to hurt a little bit. Ah, uh, yep, that hurts a little bit. <laughs> well, we might need to hit a healing uh, encounter soon. 75 gold. And we get a rare pack. So we have double the amount of rage. We don't have any rage stacking currently, so not super useful. Um, spike the Hellhorn, consume rage and armor. Uh, these can be very powerful when comboed with something that allows you to gain a bunch of mana, which we don't have at the moment. Uh, Woken's Rail Spike is more sure to be useful. We can enhance a bunch of cards to make them basically free, which is uh, quite handy. So I might do this. We have quite a bit of card draw, but that also works as like card draw that makes your uh, stuff cheaper too. So we already have a, a Hellhorned Warrior, and he's okay. But I do kind of like the Alpha Fiend. It grows a little stronger the faster, the more he hits enemies. Every time he hits, he gets plus three damage. Uh, really good coupled with multi strike so it hits multiple times. The Husk Hermit's also maybe not a bad choice. Alpha Fiend takes up a little bit of space as well, though, being three spaces wide. I think we might take the uh, Husk Hermit. Uh, we, still have, we still have quite a bit of AoE solutions, though. But I haven't really got the spell upgrades I need, need yet. We can refer to the map to see what's coming up as well. So we know that here there's a Merchant of Magic, Hellhorns, and Forgotten Boons. Pyre Remains, Merchant of Steel, and Unstable Vortex. There is Creature Upgrade on the left there. So there's a chance we could get the Multi-Strike for this dude. It would be pretty good if we could do that. Now every few battles we get a uh, one of these uh, enhancements that increases our Pyre Strength, but also allows us to take either extra mana, card draw, or uh, floor width. Now we don't need the card draw. Extra mana, very good. Floor width, also very good as well. So we can fit more creatures on the bottom floor or all of the floors. Uh, I'm tempted to go for the... Hmm, I did take the... I did just take the guy that's three width and two widths, which fills up the bottom floor, which doesn't leave any space for like molting imps or anything. So I might actually take the floor width and maybe look at going extra mana later. Okay... Unstable Vortex, Merchant of Steel, and Healing is probably the best idea. There's lots of stuff I could do with the spells for sure. We're gonna go. We're gonna go heal for safety. I'm gonna go hit the uh, Unstable Vortex, and we're going to remove a Train Steward because they're not doing a lot anymore, and we're getting more creatures. And I'm probably gonna remove a Restore or maybe a uh, regular Torch since that's also not very useful. Uh, yeah, I think just a Restore is probably the least impactful. And then we get to upgrade our champion as well. So we can stay stay with the draw one path. Uh, we'll keep this one even if we swap lanes. But we can go up to 100 health so that we get phenomenally tanky. <laughs> or we can go with Rejuvenate, deals 15 damage to the front any enemy unit. I'm not opposed to potentially swapping paths here. Um, although if we stay on the revenge draw one, we might be able to do something interesting at the third upgrade later on. Hmm... I mean, 55 is still fairly tanky, and the uh, Rejuvenate to deal extra damage to the front enemy unit's not bad. If we stack regen, every regen tick triggers that as well. I think I'm going to go with the Rejuvenate, so we're going to swap paths. We've got our card draw sorted, and we're going to swap paths and focus more on, like, the regen stacking instead, maybe. Now, we have access to a few choices here. So we could upgrade with Quick, which allows them first strike. It's not bad on, say, the Horned Warrior. Um, we can get spikes, which is generally quite good on anything that's going to be potentially tanking. Um, I like maybe the rail beater with spikes is kind of cool. Um, and extra health. Now we want to maybe use some of this. So I'm thinking I'm going to put spikes on the rail beater, and maybe couple that with toughness on the rail beater, so he can be a tank on another floor now. I don't think I'm going to use the quick because I want to spend 40 gold rerolling, which leaves us with 125, which is enough to get multi strike. Oh yes. <laughs> So, multi-strike is great on, like, 
all of these, but uh, especially good on the Alpha Fiend, who's now 10 times 2, but every time he hits, he gains 3, so he gets 6 per uh, attack now, basically, <laughs> since he's hitting twice. So that's very nice. Rage 5 is like not that good because it, it decays, so it's not super useful. I mean, you could like put it on an imp or something. <laughs> 20 gold, probably not worth the expenditure. Um, someone we might want to make a little tankier. Hmm. I don't think we do it. I think we just save our gold. Neither of those are particularly impactful for us right now. Save the gold for future upgrades and move on to the next battle. Okay, we have Clip Defenders, Light Harnesses, Pylite Master, and non-boss enemies get 6 plus damage for 150 coins. You know I'm taking the challenges on. I'm particularly bad at not passing up on the challenge offers and uh, dying as a result of it. <laughs> These guys kind of uh, are kind of nasty. They get resolve plus three damage after each uh, combat. So when they move up, they'll go up to 10 damage. Hopefully we can kill some of them before then, but probably not. I'm going to put down an Alpha Fiend. So this left, since we did the floor space upgrade, we now have one spare space, which is enough for like an imp. Uh, we're going to put the Animus of Speed here. Hopefully pick off whoever makes it through. Mm, I might have been a little bit risky, actually, because she might die. That's all right. We do have 22 damage consumed for next turn, so we can hopefully make that enough. <laughs> the, the goblin appeared and immediately died from the hammer. <laughs> I love it. Uh, looks like this guy took some damage from the hammer as well. Uh, okay, we can put Railbeater in front as well. That'll help a lot. Now, is that enough to kill? Yes, that is enough to kill. Perfect. So we can kill both of them. I like it a lot. Is it worth doing the Molting Imp? Mm. What I might actually do is do the Fledgling Imp and give ourselves some like extra rage damage for now. We'll consume for the extra card draw and we'll leave that for now. And they're all going to die. Railbeat is going to lose some of his armor, but that's okay. He's doing his job in tanking. Now they got a, they've got a tanky guy up the front as well this time around. We can fit, we can actually fit the Horned Warrior in here as well, so I'll totally do that. And, hmm. We want to make sure that these guys are likely to die next turn, so a Molting Imp's not a bad idea here. I think most of the creatures are getting summoned this time around are pretty tanky. Now, not much reason to really, like, cast any of this other stuff. Maybe, like, a stack of regens the go, since every time we heal, we do 15 points of damage now. Since we got that one, so there's another 15 points of damage. And the extra regen stack doesn't hurt either. We can keep stacking that up in the lead up to the boss fight as much as possible. Alright, a little bit of damage being dealt there. This guy's gonna die, nice and easy. We might want to use the other Molting Imp here, I think. Stack another regen. Glimmer's not a bad idea, because it actually triggers... This is another reason I love Glimmer. It triggers the heal, which then triggers the return damage. So there's another 15 points of damage. And we'll stack even more regen. And the uh, last big heal. Yeah, I think the last big heal. Now, we're dealing with things a lot better now. These creatures are not making it through like the previous round. So stuff's starting to kind of come together. Sometimes you'll get a brief respite before the uh, boss appears. So now's just a good chance for us to uh, stack some, like, Sharpen or something like that. Uh, we could do a, a Rail Spike for one. Everything else is kind of not super useful, so we'll check it. Ah, it's just a torch. It's a free torch, though. Whoa! <laughs> maybe just going with the heal would have been better. I wanted to see what we'd draw. I could have maybe checked my uh, draw pile to see what, what possible things could have drawn. So all the, all the upgrades and the regen stacks, we've stacked 14 stacks of regen and 4 stacks of thorns. Make that 19 stacks of regen. Either way, it's enough to kill the boss on this round. So that's good news. Actually, I should have just cast a full button. Bone Spire Peel thing. Whatever it's called. <laughs> Bone Brow. All right. A solid victory. So we can hold right click. I like how the little fast forward icon turns into a shocked face at the top. <laughs> Uber speed. The secret Uber speed if you hold down right click. A very good run and lots of gold. And a couple of new cards for us to check. Wildwood Tome, applying quick is quite nice. Uh, descend a unit, restore 10 health. Adaptive Mutation, restore a friendly unit to full health and then swap the damage and life. There are some very powerful combos you can do with this card. I don't know if I have any creatures that are super good for it. Um, 
obviously if I put it on sentient, my sentient would die, so that would be a terrible idea. <laughs> Uh, you can remove the consume from it and then keep casting it as well. But there's some creatures who have the bonus max health. We saw one earlier. Adaptive Mutation is very powerful with them. Since I don't have any targets for it, it's kind of a bad idea to take it. And I'd much rather just take Wildwood Tome to be able to apply quick when I need to. And we're seeing more imps, but we haven't had any of the big imp stuff come like to our come our way yet. Uh, so kind of isn't the imp stuff isn't paying off too much yet. I mean, the imps are fine as is, even without any payoff combo stuff. But there's some powerful imp things you can do later, like, uh, I think it's called, uh, imps... implosion? <laughs> you can sacrifice an imp, deal a bunch of damage, and there's like a way to sacrifice imp, get card draw, gain mana. There's lots of fun stuff you can do with imps. Uh, return a consumed spell to your hand. This is pretty good for potentially getting back, uh, rail spike. As well as a few of the other things, so I don't mind the imp score. He's right. And the imps are like, you, you know, you put them on the battlefield once, and then your deck's thin. They don't stick around and like waste space in your deck effectively so they're not too bad at all um now we have more creature upgrades which could potentially be really nice uh we could add a second upgrade to our multi-striker here maybe multi-strike again is uh it would be insanely good with him uh however there's also trinkets which is artifacts and i do have enough gold to buy an artifact and cutting deck two cards as well i also really like so i'm gonna uh i'm gonna cut two cards from my deck and buy an artifact so we're going to cut... I might actually keep the Restore. I'm going to cut a Torch. And I'm going to cut a Train Steward. As you saw last time, I'm not really using the Train Stewards anymore. Well, most of the time I just passed up on casting them. It wasn't worth the mana. It wasn't worth the point of mana to cast them. So we just want to get rid of them. So we have three artifacts available. But if we don't like any of these, we can reroll and ha still have a shot at buying one. So X co cost cards get plus three to their value. That's really good. Um, with Rail Spike. Uh, it's nice with Bone Spire. We don't have a lot else for it, but even just on Rail Spike alone, that's really good. Friendly units gain plus two on kill is not bad. So Hell Pact is really good, but kind of limited in scope. We could gamble on the reroll. <gasps> Do we gamble on the reroll? Mm, that's really good. And we could potentially draft another X cost card in the future. That could be really powerful. Oh, I think I have to take Hell Pact. I think I have to take Hell Pact. And I'll also Purge an extra train steward if you want to do a train steward build it's actually possible there's an artifact that gives train stewards multi-strike and two damage shields uh which you can actually make some really good train stewards if you do that but uh you know <laughs> that's just luck whether you get that artifact enemies appear on each floor at the start for 150 coins mm, that one could be a little bit nasty but we have plenty of pyre health i'm feeling game give me the 150 coins And some of them are dying from our artifact anyway, <laughs> thankfully. And we are lowering their damage a little bit. So three of them made it through here. That's not too bad. We're going to put down our multi-striker on the bottom floor. And we might pop the rail beater up the top to deal with the ones that make it through. Rail beater has uh, the thorns we gave him. So he just soaks up these little little dudes. So no one's going to be making it through to that pile <laughs> with the rail beater. <laughs> standing guard, standing vigil. Lots of little creatures. This is where our AoE damage will really come in handy. Uh, even the collector's gonna die, so that's good. And uh, I mean, it might be worth just absorbing the. Uh... These are gonna do end up doing a little bit more damage because as they die, they'll give bonus damage to the other creatures. Um, hmm. Maybe I'll like fledgling imp and get a little bit of extra damage on the. Uh... No, because that's not that's not going to hit the rear line. I really want to damage this guy as much as possible, so I might actually do the Molting Imp. We're not going to draw as many cards. I mean, in fact, we're going to draw no cards. But uh, we do have that, at least. I'm going to pop him down there. He's a little bit vulnerable, though, so we're going to have to maybe, like, pop the Imp in front of him. So I'll sure do that just to protect him in the future. These ones die. We get the extra coins. So we're going to be pretty rich after this battle. Uh, presuming we live. Okay, these ones are going to survive behind, which is kind of a little bit painful. Um, quick might be best placed here. Normally I would have put it on the Alpha Fiend to get him to attack first, but it's not going to make much difference. And uh, if I, I want the Horned Warrior to attack first to try and like kill some of these. So we're going to put the Quick down. Now we have the X plus three, so we can cast it for zero and still get the plus three effect, which is nice. Uh, we'll do the Glimmer, which deals some extra damage to the front uh, there. So that's really nice. And we can save our Imps for now, I think. Put some regen on here. And, hmm. 
I might even use the... No, we'll just cast the Bone Spire for an extra. No, we'll stack up the regions. <laughs> and then we'll cast the Bone Spire for zero to heal five. Which is not bad. There's our Rail Spike plus three. Oh, I love it. I love it. And we could... Um, we can't pass, cast Rail Spike in Impish Skull this turn because it'll consume a lot of mana. Hmm... Do I want to sharpen this turn? We'll definitely use this first. We'll save the Impish Scholar for a future round. Want to maybe pick off one of these guys? It does make the rest of them tougher, but that's okay. We can handle that. I think we want to draw the Wet Rail Spikes to try and get some useful stuff this turn. There we go. Very nice. We'll pop the Animus of Speed down here. So now we have two quick people on this floor, so that'll help take out anyone who bleeds through. And I'll drop my torch on this guy. And we'll pop an imp down. Help finish them off. We get a free heal, so we definitely want to do that. And it looks like they're all going to die now, which is good news. You're going to make it through with two health? No, <laughs> Can't allow that. <laughs> it's 12 points of damage on our pile. We don't want that. Oh, wait, he makes it through with one. <laughs> I miscalculated. <laughs> Oh no, because the thorns I should have put in behind. If I'd put in behind, it would have killed him. I forgot about the thorns. <laughs> Whoops, misplay. Classic. Classic misplays. Alright, we're going to uh, pop our Impish Scholar down here. Boss is coming next turn. Uh, we got the Consumed Torch back, in, unfortunately. Not the one we didn't want. And it looks like we're good, so we're just going to put the Sharpen to the thorns on our boss here. We got up to 31 times 2 on the Alpha Fiend. That is not too bad. We actually drew Sharpen again, which is quite good. So we're going to do that again. Is the boss is already going to die, so it's fine. Whoops, I just regen the Imp. But we have got it covered, nonetheless. The Thorns plus the Multi-Strike guy behind is uh, very good for us on the boss killing. Having a nice, tanky creature. There are a few things that really uh, make a big difference in this game. Um... That it will have helped me, I suppose. One is like thinning your deck a lot helps a ton. That's the same for every deck builder. Um, upgrades are massive in this game. Carefully upgrading things and really making the most of upgrades makes a huge deal. Um, so upgrades are huge in this game. And the other one is like try and make sure you have some decent tanky creatures because the boss keeps attacking until the end. Having a tanky creature every turn or like every attack that you delay the boss for means another attack back from your creature that's sitting behind your tank so having a, like a nice tanky character with lots of uh lots of regen or something stacked on it is really good i don't really need either of these these are not bad but uh, i might just take the spikes more spikes on my boss would be nice and another consume card probably doesn't hurt we did get impressive for the sacrifice into for 50 damage sometimes it can be nice to have a way to get rid of your own imps um, a little way of stacking some armor here. Mm, most of the time I've been using my imps as little sacrificial pawns anyway, so I don't actually know if I want impressive. I'd probably take the other imp one. That uh, I mean, 50 is a lot, but the other imp uh, sacrifice skill I would probably take, which uh, gives you mana and card draw. Do I want the impish scholar? Hmm. I don't know if I'm going to have a chance to really play both impish scholars. I think I'll just skip and take the gold. March of Shields is like okay, but uh, I don't really... 10 armor is not super high value to me right now. So we have the random encounter, duplicate. Um, I mean, duplicating rail spike doesn't hurt. And in the deck and upgrading spells and artifacts is probably more tempting though. Yeah, we're going to go for this side. Artifacts. When a consume card is played, restore 5 pelf pyre health. That's not bad. Thorn casing en enhances a specific spell called sting, which is uh, actually really powerful, but is way too late for me to do anything with sting. I don't even have any stings. Uh, Refracting Lenses is pretty nice, though. Little heal. Uh, we're not too far off the end, though. Fell is probably one of the biggest, uh, run-enders. <laughs> Prior to the actual boss, she's like, uh, oh, Fell's nasty. Fell's nasty. I'm gonna remove some cards here. I'm gonna remove the other train steward. And I think we will get rid of the torch. Possibly the torch. The two damage torch does not do a lot for us anymore, and we have other other sources of dealing damage. Uh, also, really need to upgrade my glimmer. There we go. Plus ten magic power is going on glimmer. Twelve and twelve, much better. Uh, we have a lot of gold. Remove consume and co cost plus one. Pretty good on the rail spike. Pretty good on the rail spike. Uh, gives it subtracts the bonus amount basically, so we're now down to plus two. But that's still really good, right? 
Or else Spike's gonna make our entire deck free. <laughs> so it's kind of a good one. <laughs> it's kind of good. Now we can make something here, minus one. It's not a big deal. Oh, Sharpen actually. Two is pretty expensive for Sharpen. I kind of like making that minus one. Holdover. Oh, yes. Oh. Oh, this is... This is a difficult one. Um, I don't think I want Holdover Rail Spike, even though it would be pretty insane. It would be a bit too ridiculous. Um, in kind of not the right ways, I don't think. I don't know if I want to be casting rail or working Rail Spike every turn. A working Glimmer? I probably want to cast that every turn, though. Yes. So uh, the Glimmer is now... Uh, Holdover allows you to cast it this turn, and then it'll appear next turn. It guarantees you draw it next turn. Magic power and consume. I could pop that on the other restore. Or I could do another minus one. I could do both. I'll do both. You can go on the restore, thus thinning the deck down to uh, be pretty lean at this point, actually. And minus one for just something random. It doesn't really matter that much. I could do zero cost sharpen. It'd be nice to have holdover on this, though. Mm, I'll just do a zero cost sharpen. Double stack probably would have been better, but we're pretty close to the final boss at this point, so my chances of getting uh, another spell upgrade is pretty low. Alabaster Guardians have multi-strike. Fell empowers units with rage. Ooh, this is a nasty one. So Fell summons three statues on the field, and then in this particular variant can empower them with rage. So in this case, she empowered the bottom floor with rage. So it's five times two, 10 and 11. <laughs> it's pretty nasty. That is pretty nasty. Okay, so Fel's gonna fly between the floors, empowering these with multi-strike. The, the key to killing Fel is typically to deal with the statues as quickly as possible, especially the bottom floor. Um, we don't have our multi-striker to pop down behind the sentient. We can kill this rear one here, but... Uh, I don't know if I want to put Animus of Speed on the bottom floor. I want to put the highest damage thing behind the biggest tank that I can, <laughs> is the idea. We're definitely going to put down one of these up the top, try and kill the statue. Hopefully Fel doesn't move immediately to the top, we'll see. Um, and we're going to put down our champ here. And the champ's going to take way too much damage, so I'm going to use the Imp to deal 5 damage here, get rid of that one, and then we will just take a little bit of damage. And I might as well use my Bone Shine to get rid of it so I don't draw it again. So we want to try and deal with those statues as much as possible. And Fel has a ton of life, as you see, 1,200 life. So uh, we also want to kill Fel. Uh, we'll deal some damage to Fel early on wherever possible. So she put a multi-strike on the bottom floor again. We do have a Horned Warrior here. We have, I think, some... I think we'll be okay. We're going to put the Horned Warrior up the... Oops, don't do that. Horned Warrior up the top. And... Uh, Kill that statue before Fel empowers it, because she'll probably empower it next turn. And then we're going to try and keep our Sentient alive. <laughs> so we're going to Molten Imp up the front to tank one hit and kill one of the little ones. Now this one has Encant. If we cast a spell, this guy's going to gain 10 armor. That kind of sucks, but I need to do it anyway. Like, I want to cast these on my champion. <laughs> it's worth it's worth the trade-off. So we're going to let this guy encant like crazy, and he's going to gain 30 armor, but it's worth the trade-off for me. So the statue goes down, which is very good news. That means whenever Fel goes to the top floor now, she won't be able to do anything there, and uh, she'll take damage from our people. So that'll be very helpful. And we finally drew our Alpha Fiend. A little bit late. Thankfully our... Oops, not that one. Alpha Fiend. Thankfully our champion is not dying, so that's very good news. And we did get our Glimmer. Now that we've drawn Glimmer, as long as we play it every turn... We will be able to continue playing it every turn. So that's good news. There's no encants here, and we can kill the little one. We can get a heal, deal more damage to the statue. It's all good news. That's all good news. We are out of mana, so we can't do much else here. Unfortunately, my Atoms of Speed is going to die. I could probably... Uh... I maybe could have cast the Melting Imp in front of the Animus of Speed to protect it. That probably would have been better than playing the, um, the Holdover Glimmer, actually. Yeah. Well, it was a trade-off in the end. Losing the Animus does kind of suck. It means a bit less damage on the boss, most likely. Um, and a little bit of damage to our Pyre, of course. It's definitely not ideal. Now, we're going to have the same situation here unless we do something to prevent it. So we're going to do the Impish Scholar. And we get our Wildwood Sap back. Which we're going to put on our Champ, because we want to stack this up as much as possible. We might want to put Quick on the... 
Mm, is it going to make much difference? It's not going to make much difference. In fact, I don't really want to do it on the Alpha Fiend because then we draw less cards if we kill the creatures first. I don't even know if it's worth casting it here. It's not going to make much difference. It's not going to result in a kill or anything. Do I want to put the Rage Imp down? This guy is going to make it through no matter what. How much damage is he going to do? <laughs> a bit. <laughs> He's going to do a bit. This one's going to die though. We can't make much difference to this situation. But we can make a bit of difference down here to these ones that would later be going through. So we can try and stop these ones from going through and doing a ton of damage. We do 22 points of damage isn't going to make much difference. Unfortunately, I'm not really dealing with this Alabaster Guardian. But uh, not much we can do about that. Alright, we're going to do a Torch here. Ensure this kill. We'll draw three next turn. And we'll also Rail Spike. Uh, we did get the Rail Beater though. I will pop the Rail Beater down here. And do I want a Molting Imp at all? Mm, I'll leave the Molting Imp for later. He's not going to He's not gonna achieve much. I mean, it is going to prevent a lot of damage here. Actually, only five from the statue because it's Multi-Strike. Multi-Strike will kill the first target and then hit the second target behind it. If it does kill the first target in that first hit. So Multi-Strike can cut through like a path of uh, small creatures quite effectively. All right, raging up the bottom floor. Uh, we've stabilized on our champ quite well, though. We want to do as much as we can to ensure the boss kill in the future. This guy is going to incant, um, but it's worth playing Sharpen anyway, and he's still going to die, so that's good news. Um, we might just want to focus on the other floors a bit more, I think. I think we will prevent this guy from dying. Uh, he doesn't have... Oh, I could have given him Quick would have also worked instead of putting the Imp there. Yeah, the imp might have been better better played elsewhere, perhaps. I kind of want to keep drawing my Glimmer, so I might uh, just cast that this turn. Do a bit of damage here. And I think we will Rail Spike. Mm, I really want to put the regen on my boss, too. Will we still do enough damage? It's 50-something. I'm kind of surprised that we are doing enough damage, to be honest. We're doing 12 overkill damage here, so it should actually be enough if I Wildwood Zap. Mm, no, it's not enough. <laughs> Whoops. Oh, it might be worth just going all in. There we go. That kind of does the trick. And I'll do another Sharpen. I shall encant him again. And do I want to do the same, same mistake again? <laughs> I mean, he'll probably die next turn. <laughs> he'll likely die at some point. I think I want to make sure that we're going to kill the boss. So even if this guy survives... I really want to make sure that we're going to kill the boss on the first level. Because if we don't kill it on the first level, we're not going to kill it at all. <laughs> Fell will... There's a good chance I'm going to die in this round. Fell can be a run under, as I said. Fell is really nasty. She has multi-strike. She has a ton of health. We haven't been able to do a lot of damage to her health yet. Now, we don't have enough damage to kill the Clipped Guardian in one go. Ooh. Ouchie, yeah. I think we just Rail Spike for three. Get as much as we can here. Oh, I only had one thing to draw. I have pretty much my whole deck in my hand already. <laughs> oh, that was a bit of a waste. Um, all right. Looks like there's no saving him. No, there's no saving him. Okay, they're going to die. That's fine. Let's kill off this middle floor here. Sharpen up our boss. Apply regen. I got 20 stacks of thorns, 26 stacks of regen. The thorns are going to help the regen. This guy's going to die, but there's not much we can do about it. There's nothing we can do about it, to be specific. It's okay. It's going to be all or nothing on the bottom floor. Frost versus fell. Okay, she's raging up the top one there. That's good. Bottom floor is going to die. That's good. You're going to make it through, and there's, again, not much we can do about that. Um, I can do 12 points of damage, but it doesn't actually make a difference. We just have to let it go through. We just have to let it go through. Do a little bit of damage to the boss here. Sharpen up our champ. Um, we can draw two cards here, which I can do if I even even if I cast these first. I'll do this. I'll do this, and then we'll rail spike. The Rail Spike is comboing quite nice with our thin deck now, because as you can see, I'm able to like just cast a ton of uh, regens and buffs on our champion here. <laughs> so it's we've almost got a bit of a combo going. It's not quite what I'd say like a full combo here, but because we can't kind of like chain it, and certainly not an infinite combo or anything, but we can play like our whole deck at this point, and then we can Rail Spike and play our whole deck again. <laughs> so that's not bad. That is not bad. 
Looks like we are indeed going to kill the boss, but this is what we would have done if we weren't able to do it. We managed to pull it off. The power of stacking a crap load of thorns, 36 damage. The boss is going to hit us twice each turn and take 64 points of damage. And then we're going to regen 46 each turn for 46 turns. Well, it decays by one, you know. And then 37 times two each cycle as well. So this is a little something what this looks like. Punch, punch. Boss whacks twice, takes a bunch of damage. We whack back and two more big whacks again. We can fast forward it, but uh, I was not sure we were going to make it. Things were looking pretty rough elsewhere on the battlefield. But uh, when it came to our champion was able to go toe to toe with Phil quite handily. And that lets us proceed on to the second last and final battle. Phil is scary, um, but we made it through. Now, do we want any of this? Consume armor is okay. Um, enhance with plus 10 and apply spikes 4 is really good. It's just really expensive. Although we have uh, the spike to make it free. Well, minus two, make it cost one. Um, yeah, I'll take Cycle of Life in the context of the fact that our spike's really paying off a lot. Now, we don't really need floor space anymore. Um, as long as I have my space for my imp, I'm happy. And uh, the extra mana, however, will be a little bit helpful, at least in getting our combo started. The extra card draw is probably not going to make much difference, I don't imagine. Spell upgrades? Ooh, or creature upgrades. Ooh, both are very tempting. Whichever one we go with, we can get the alternate later. Um, however, if I go this route, I'm going to end up with more gold. Uh, and a little bit of healing. This was an artifact. A artifact could have been good. The random encounter could have been good too. But I want to see if we can get some... Uh, ooh, ooh, double stack cycle of life. Applies spikes eight. Ooh. Yes. I think I'm going to go for that big spikes for the final boss. Plus ten magic power. Mm, doesn't really make much difference here. Minus one on cycle of life, which means the rail spike will take it down to zero cost if I'm, if my math is correct. Now I don't think I need to use the power stone; it's kind of a waste. Um, so we could re-roll, but I save the gold for the next round, and then we get our final champion upgrade, which we can buff buff up the life a bunch, or we can do rejuvenate thirty. Um, that's not bad. It doubles the amount of damage each time we... Because every time we were ticking regen, we're dealing, we were doing 15 points of damage, right? Which is particularly nice on the boss as well. This is like a little bit... It's like 35 more health though. Um, but I think I like the uh, 15 points of damage per regen tick. We've kind of made a regen build here with Thorns as kind of like a sub theme. This, this is not a Thorns build. You, you will know a Thorns build when you see it because you stack hundreds of Thorns and then use spells that... Uh, do damage based on how much thorns you have <laughs> to do like 500 points of damage to the boss. Uh, it's good stuff. Spikes for five, 300 coins. Okay, this is the situation where I'm like, no, we don't do this one. <laughs> we do not do this one. There's some very tanky creatures here. Uh, we have some creatures that are going to be very vulnerable to five spikes that are just going to die. And we might just die to the underling creatures if we do that one. So we're going to be wise and not do the challenge, which is me turning a new leaf, actually. We get our Alpha Fiend turn one, which is very nice. And it's really not a bad idea to multi imp here. We'll probably want to try and get a bit of damage dealt to this guy. Oh, we can actually Rail Spike right now. That's very good. <laughs> turn one Rail Spike is excellent. Uh, now, do we want... We might want more time to deal with this guy. So I might put the Horned Warrior up the top. Definitely get our Wildwood Sap down here. And there's not much reason for me to play my Imp right now. I mean, just because he's free is not a good enough reason to pay him, play him. So as we cut down our deck, and this is why we thin things down as much, we're getting more and more likely to draw the Awoken Rail Spike each time, which is the, uh, that's the dream. Now, I can, it might seem like there's no way of killing this, but if I put the Rail Beater down, he will knock this guy back, and then... Oh, no, but the Animus of Speed will hit first. No, we can't do it. I, I, I was right the first time. I can't kill him. <laughs> uh, oh, that's unfortunate. That's unfortunate. I should have put the Rail Beater down in front of this guy then. <laughs> in the end. Oh, well. Okay, let's get our spikes. Let's get enhanced with extra spikes. Mm, nah, even if I put the imp down, it doesn't make any difference. I'm going to put the imp in front of this guy. Give me my pyre shards back again so I can get even more spikes. Mm, I think this, this run could be a win. I'm feeling, I'm feeling the potential victory in this run. Okay, that's a lot of stuff. 
That's a lot of stuff. <laughs> All right, we need to heal up our champ a bit though. Um, is quick gonna make a difference here? No, that guy's gonna make it through with a bit of health, unfortunately. Okay, let's get some regen going. Let's cast, cast our zero cost stuff. Do I want to apply rage? Is this gonna make a difference anywhere? What's this guy's resolve deal five damage to the front enemy, which is like this one. Doesn't really make a difference which one I do. I'll put the imp down here. Deal with that guy. And we might want to fledgling imp over here. No, to protect this guy a bit more, because more are gonna make it through. And we get a little bit of extra damage dealt up the top. Now I think we want a cycle of life as often as possible, so over everything else, even the Glimmer, I'll let the Glimmer go for now. Um, I want a cycle of life on my champ to make it as sturdy as possible. Ah, oh, I healed when we were already full. <laughs> it's alright, I was just thinning my deck. Just getting rid of the consume card. Alright, we can sharpen up. We can play a free imp over here, get rid of the little things. I'll do that. We get a regen, free regen, a spikes. Now we can, do we want a glimmer? How's the top floors looking? You guys are all making it through. I have 22 damage consume here, which is not enough. Unless I do something else. I could do that in glimmer. I might actually take, take get rid of this guy. And then I can uh, spike. I missed out on one boss, one champ upgrade, but that's all right. Also, I got a free glimmer back as well. Um, hmm, I might do that. This guy's harvest. Whenever things die, he gains extra armor. I ended up getting a bit from that. Put quick on him. It's free now. We're getting a lot done each turn, which is like, mm, yeah, it's come come together. You can see how the upgrades played a huge role. Like being able to cast Wildwood Sap every turn is huge. It's like being the, one of the key sources of victory, right? So those upgrades are absolutely crucial. Having a zero cost sharpen like this and being able to play Glimmer every turn is like, ugh, so good. Uh, insanity. Now let's enhance. Let's Glimmer this one for sure. And apply the regen. Now do I want a cycle of life up here to help deal with some of this stuff? Like these guys are kind of getting it through here. Nah, we'll just keep putting it out, champ. We want to go for the boss kill. And we'll get the heal here. That guy's gonna die from all the damage from the healing. That's alright. The creatures, our second and third floor creatures, are basically just to stop our pyre from taking too much damage, effectively. Okay, do as much buffing to our boss here as possible. That's gonna die either way. Um, I mean, why not? I'll just cast it so I get it back next turn. I'll work well. Rail Spike. Even more upgrades. Cast our Glimmer again for free. <laughs> <laughs> That's a lot. <laughs> That's pretty good. Here comes the boss. This boss gains one plus damage every time it gets hurt. So if you have like a if you like a lot of multi strike or a lot of little small damage, it'll gain a lot of damage. But uh and that's kind of us, because we're doing a lot of little instances of damage here. We're multi striking, we're doing thorns, and we're uh doing a little bit of we're doing damage when we heal, we're doing 30 damage when we heal, but it's all enough that we're gonna beat him either way. Especially when we stack all of this stuff. You can see how he goes up on there. But a uh, handy victory. I've played some decks similar to the one that I'm playing right now in previous runs. But I've never played one exactly like this. Like I played a few Thorns decks and a few like decks that were kind of focused on the card draw stuff. But they were more like uh, more combo spell oriented like Sting decks. Um, this is the first time I've played one like this. And that's what I, one thing I really like about this game is that uh, it always plays out. It always plays out a bit different. You never really know what you're going to end up with. And Graft is uh, not bad. Uh, it's a good way of triggering heals. At this point, though, I think our deck's great. I don't think I want to change anything. Adding an extra card is kind of just slow down our combo a little bit. Another impressive. Uh, Pyre Chomper is something I would take, though. Hmm. It would have been nice earlier on, but uh, someone gained four mana. I actually will take him, though. That'll uh, lead to me maybe potentially cycling my uh, Rail Spike a little sooner. So we wanted to go creature upgrades for this last one with the rest of our gold. Now we might want to check first the trinket shop, just to see if there's a trinket that's really good. Well, it turns out there was. I'm glad I checked the trinket shop first because bloating fungus regen restores one plus health per stack is insane for us. 
<laughs> That's so good. I gotta buy that. <laughs> we have enough for our, a 20 point upgrade so we can get like one of these small upgrades somewhere. So we can just put this on this guy, for example. Um, yeah, we'll just do that. And that's our bottom floor. Now, if everything goes according to plan, we might be able to beat Seraph, the final boss. So Seraph is the final boss. Every time she's she's got like a bunch of different modifiers, though. In this case, friendly units enter with sap three. So our creatures will be weaker when they enter. Uh, hurts our multi-strike guy a little bit early on. Not a big deal as long as we place down our creatures early before she gets there. As far as Seraph modifiers go, this one is not too bad at all. This one's not too bad. She does have some nasty creatures, though. Um, hmm, this is fine. We do have 80 points of health, so that's okay. You can see the sap there. So the sap does decay. It's minus 6 damage, uh, minus 2 per stack. It's basically the opposite of rage. Now, I don't want to put my rail beater down here, so we have to hold off for now. And do the 22 points of damage. Might be a good idea to get rid of Shade Wings. Actually, Shade Wings is drawing me a lot of cards. I killed this guy. I'm harvesting him up. Do I want the Skull Eye? It's just going to give me the Fireball back, which is not particularly useful. That's Rail Spike. Didn't draw my uh, Alpha Fiend, unfortunately. But we can get some regen stacking happening. Get an extra trigger of damage there. And, I mean, I could just Molten Imp here. Actually, I will just Molten Imp here. That's okay. Uh, okay, no Alpha Fiend early. I want to get Alpha Fiend, like, hopefully next turn. Thankfully, our deck is thin enough that, well, <laughs> I was going to say it's pretty likely to happen, but maybe not. <laughs> maybe not. Uh, okay, we also want to try and do as much damage to Seraph as possible when she's on the side. Um, so I'm going to put my creatures down over here, wherever possible. I'm going to sharpen, and we're going to put our heal down. Thankfully, our Thorns is now dealing with the little dudes. The multi-strikers are killing themselves and breaking themselves upon my body. So that's good. We should be okay at dealing with these creatures. Some of them might sneak through, unfortunately. Yeah, these ones are going to sneak through, aren't they? Uh, it looked like she summoned someone, but then it died. I think we're okay. She's applying extra saps here. It's not too big a deal. We did get our Alpha Fiend, thankfully. Pop him down. He's a little weak to begin with, but he'll get stronger. You'll get stronger. Now, we might want to, uh... Well, we definitely want to protect our Animus of Speed here. So that she can hopefully end up doing something. Uh, this Darkwings is going to cause us some grief. He's going to take some damage, but then harvest and gain 15 extra armor. Hmm. We might want to also rage both of these. Um, oh, the Sap is just hard countering the rage, though. <laughs> ah! <laughs> Oh, this is brutal. This is brutal. I think it would have been better off just glimmering. So, this thing's going to do a lot of damage to me. That's alright. We can handle it. Look, we can make it through with a bit of damage here. We're not going to be hitting a top score on this run or anything. But, uh... uh we, we'll make it through, though. Which is enough for the purposes of this. <laughs> okay. Hmm. Alright. Sharpen. Give me the regen. I'll do all the free stuff first. Let's just check the upper floors. So you're going to make it through a bit of health. You're going to make it through there. We probably do want a glimmer here. Seems like it'll be a good idea. Let's cycle of life. Rail spike. <laughs> Unfortunately, one of those was the dead weight. <laughs> I'll do my uh, bone shine. And... Hmm... Yeah, we'll just keep stacking on this. We're going to let a few little creatures trickle through. Suboptimal, but in short, if we start spreading our buffs around on other creatures, trying to kill the little stuff, then our chances diminish of being able to kill the boss, right? We want to stack that on the tankiest thing we have. Protect the Alpha Fiend, make him as strong as possible as well. We didn't end up focusing on, like, making this guy really strong in the end. He ends up doing contributing a lot. We ended up just focusing mostly on our champion. So this is like an example of where, where a champion really carries a lot of the workload. But I've had other runs where the champion like played second fiddle to other creatures or other, other spell combos. Now, let's protect you. Hmm, we can handle that damage. There's more damage coming through here potentially we might want to deal with. This just seems like a good situation to Glimmer. 
So you're going to get dealt with. You're going to make it through with a lot of health. We might want to do this torch somewhere. 40 damage. The torch will make the difference here in the pyre being able to one-shot this guy. So I might do that. Bottom floor is going to be alright. Let's play our freebies. And we probably want to uh, work on our spike for the full amount here. We could pyre chomper here is actually pretty good. So we can double stack this. That's very effective. Get some extra spikes going. And we can even play our wildwood time. Because why not let us smack someone into oblivion? <laughs> we'll get you to be quick. I don't know if it's going to really make any difference at any point. <laughs> Sometimes quick, quick's more impactful. Quick is particularly good on sweepers. Quick sweepers are really nice because they'll kill all the little high DPS glass cannon creatures before they have a chance to uh, murder your own creatures. So you can really pay off in those situations. Okay, we'll leave the bottom floor alone. We'll deal with this one. Try and thin this out as much as possible. Hmm... Drop our final little fella down there. Cast some of this. Cast this. And all these zero cost mega thorns upgrades looking so good. There's a free glimmer. I'll just drop it up the top. Pop some extra regen. What are we up to? 27 stacks of regen? I think if we, think if we get around 50 by the time Seraph gets here, we'll be in good shape. 50 stacks of regen is a lot for the boss to have to eat through. Oh yeah, it's looking very good. <laughs> it's looking very good. All right, you guys are going. You guys are going. Yeah, we're taking a lot of pyre damage though. <laughs> I'm getting pretty nervous about that actually. Uh, let's cast the whale spike. We don't have any way of really keeping this thing alive unless we. Uh, if we do a bit of this. Hmm. No, it's not going to be enough, is it? Because that'll be 13 health. That's still going to do enough damage to kill them. Oh boy, this is really looking a bit scary. I'm, uh, I am getting a bit worried now. I've been ignoring these and this might be my undoing. <laughs> this might be my undoing. Uh, okay. Well... I'll give it a little bit of extra damage, and hopefully it'll be enough. <laughs> that guy's gonna die as well. <laughs> oh boy, our top floors are just falling over. We went all in on the bottom floor. Which, while strategically sound, maybe will prove to be not super tact tactically sound. I think we will be okay. This is the final wave, thankfully. <laughs> so, yeah, we'll be alright. As long as we win right now, oh, and we already are going to win. <laughs> Look at that. Nine times three... It's certainly going to hurt a lot against 56 points of Thorns damage, right? Oh, yes, that's very good. Let's just play everything anyway, right? Because as if you don't want to do massive overkill, tremendous overkill. There you go. Don't let this fool you. Seraph can be very difficult. As I said, I've played about 50 hours of the game, so we did have, we were able to make it through. I was a little bit nervous at some points there, but uh, looks like Seraph is going to be breaking themselves upon my body. Thick, girthy, spiky champion with a very solid victory. We did lose the maximum possible amount of points in this battle <laughs> with the uh, 54 damage taken. So we're not going to be getting a top, top score here. I think my highest score is like 49k. As you see, we get to, spoilers, take the uh, embers and the fires back to hell. Ah, oh, much better, much more warmer. This is where I hope to spend my winter holidaying. And we get all of our scores tallied up. You actually get really good run overview stuff in this game. Any extra gold you had at the end is extra score. And if you win a Covenant rank run, any cards you have get Gilded Frame. So we gilded our Cycle of Life, our Scholars, our Alpha Fiend. We did some good work in that. You can see a nice breakdown. If you get uh, have XP to get on your heroes, you'll unlock new stuff. We unlocked Transcend Imp, a very cool Imp card. And uh, I mean, increased my win streak from zero to one. <laughs> And it shows you unlocks. You've got your wood. You got your logbook here, where you can see where my various victories have been. My highest victories have been won, and which things you've mastered, and all that sort of stuff. Which things you've unlocked, and you can see your covenant ranks down on the bottom left, and things like that as well. Best win streaks one. <laughs>
I, uh, look, I may not be getting win streaks, but I have had some wins at, at the very least. You also get pretty good run summary stuff in this, so you can always, like, look back over your old runs and see what decks did, uh, what you did with decks and all that sort of stuff. So, a lot of fun. Anyway, this is a very long video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this first look at the Monster Train action. Uh, check it out. It's coming out in a few days, so, uh, I'll leave a link in the description. Uh, check it out, and, uh, if you guys want to see more content, let me know in the comments below. Anyway, that's it for now. I'm Ziggy D. Thanks for watching.